This happened when I was a senior in high school. Snapchat was how I communicated with all of my friends during that time. In fact, I would bet that Snapchat was the most popular app in the entire school. I went to a pretty large high school and really enjoyed it. Sometime in the fall semester, though, I was added on Snapchat by a new user. It happened on a day shortly after I arrived at school. It did not seem like a bot or anything like that, but I still didn't know who this person was. The username was Josh something. It was a lot of numbers. And the name was just Josh. There were probably a few people named Josh at my school. I added the account back without giving it much thought. Not long after doing so, Josh sent me a Snapchat. It was a chat though, not a picture. He said hi to me and what's up. I responded asking him who he was and how I knew him. He claimed to go to my school and mentioned it by name. I believed him and had no reason not to. I don't remember exactly what I said after that, probably just cool or something. We talked very briefly, but I didn't know what he looked like, so I didn't know if I had a class with him or anything. The conversation didn't last very long, and I stopped talking with him. But later on, in that same school day, I got another Snapchat from Josh. Once again, it was just a chat, and I still didn't know what he looked like. He said, meet me behind the school near the English hallway doors after school. That was kind of weird. Why was he asking me to meet him after school? I knew where that exit was from the English hallway. It was rarely used and in the back corner of the school in a quieter area. I asked him why. He said to just please show up. I really wanted to know who exactly this guy was, but when I clicked on his username again, there was no way of knowing. He didn't have a last name or initial, just Josh and a bunch of numbers. So when the school day ended, I did not go behind the school like he asked. I just left through the main side exit and went to my car in the student parking lot. I got another snap from him and I saw it when I got into my car. He asked me where I was and I left him on open and then started to drive home. The drive home was normal. When I got to my street where I lived with my parents though, a car followed me onto it. We lived on a quieter street and I did not recognize the car. I pulled into my driveway and the car kept going down the street. I went inside and unpacked my school things, then went into my bedroom. I could see out the window that the same car was now parked on the side of the street a little ways up. The way that it parked, kind of in front of our yard, seemed a little bit strange to me. I couldn't tell who was inside of it though. It was a red two-door sedan, kind of smaller and looked to be fairly old, at least 15 years old. I covered my window and then went to the kitchen to get something to eat. Not long after, I remember that the car was gone. Pretty soon, I forgot all about it. I didn't get any Snapchats from Josh and had a pretty normal day. That night though, when I got into my bedroom to go to bed, I saw the car again. It was parked in the same spot, the same red car. I couldn't tell if anybody was inside of it or not. I had a really bad feeling though. I left my bedroom and found my dad and told him about it. This just seemed really strange and I didn't know who it was. I wasn't sure what my dad wanted to do about it, but I figured that I should let him know. He left the house, I guess to go get a closer look at the car. I watched him from the window. Now, I had no idea if anybody was inside of the car or not. It was too hard to tell from where I was. When my dad got about halfway to the car, suddenly it started driving. It sped off and went down the street past my dad standing in our front yard. When the car was gone, my dad came back inside. He said that he saw some man driving. We were glad that the car was now gone. I didn't connect the car to the person on Snapchat, but the next morning, I remembered the person. When I looked on Snapchat, I had been blocked from the account. I asked around some friends at school, and none of them knew who the Josh guy could possibly be. I'm pretty sure that a grown man was pretending to be the Josh guy and tried to get me to go with him. He probably followed me home after I didn't meet up with him like he asked. It's really creepy to think about if that was in fact the case. The good thing though is that I've never heard from him again or saw the car after that. This happened back when I was a college student. During that time, I shared a house with a roommate named Stephanie and we each had our own bedroom. When I was in college, I used the Snapchat app on a daily basis. Quite a few of my friends are on Snapchat, not just from college, but from high school and other places as well. I snap with quite a few of them regularly. One night, I got added by someone new on Snapchat. When I looked at the username, I didn't know who it was. 
It was a guy, and I thought that possibly he had went to my school or something. Maybe I had met him at one point. At that time, I had been in college for a couple of years, and had met lots of people in my time there. I added the user back, seeing that his bitmoji was a pretty typical looking guy. Not long after this, I received a snap from him. I opened it, curious as to who he was, and what he was sending me. It was just a blank picture of nothing, really. It seemed to be all black. I wondered why he sent me this, but I just opened it and did not respond. A couple of hours went by. Now it was a little bit later at night. My roommate Stephanie was gone and I was at home by myself and in my bedroom. I was doing some homework but was planning to go to bed soon. I received another Snapchat from the same guy though. Like before, it was a picture. This time though, I opened it and the picture looked like it was of my house and the picture was taken from my street. When I saw this, I wondered how this person could be there. Did they know this was my house? I sent a chat to the guy and asked him what he was doing. He opened it, but did not immediately reply. I went to my bedroom window, which was covered, and lifted the blinds slightly to look outside. When I did, I did not see anything. I couldn't see the whole street from my window, but did see part of it. I was hoping that maybe he was just walking by. And maybe this was one of my friends who actually knew me and was playing a joke. It seemed pretty unlikely for that to be the case, though. Hopefully the guy was gone now. About five minutes or so went by. I had gone back to my homework and was just about done. I saw that I got another snap from the same guy though. This time, it was not a picture, but a chat. It said, open your front door. I got up and left my bedroom. Carefully, I walked over to the living room and looked out of the window that had a view of the front step. I saw a man standing there right outside of the front door. From where I was, I couldn't see the guy's face, but about up to his shoulders, so I really didn't know who he was, but he didn't appear to be anybody that I recognized. I had no plans to open the door for him. I responded, asking who he was. He did not reply. I threatened to call the police. I said, if you don't leave or tell me who you are, I will call the cops. He opened that, but did not respond to it. I watched him continue to stand at the front step. Then, after about a minute, I saw him leave the step and go to the left. It was out of my sight, and I hoped and assumed that he was leaving. I went to another window and looked out of it in the direction that he went. I didn't see anything, though. This probably meant that he was gone now. For the next several minutes, I went around the house and looked out just about every side of it, but did not see the guy. This made me feel better, and I figured that he was gone. Then I went back into my bedroom. I should have gone to sleep right then, but I wasn't that tired anymore. It wasn't all that late, either. I was done studying though and went into my room and turned on my TV. About an hour later, I felt my phone vibrate next to me on the bed. I picked it up and saw yet another snap from the same guy. At first, I didn't want to open it, but ultimately, I decided to. It was a picture, and after opening it, I saw that it was a close-up of my bedroom window. I looked over to the window but couldn't see out of it at all because of the thick blinds that I had. Then I heard a knocking on the window. I took out my phone and dialed 911. I couldn't take it anymore. Then I ran out of my bedroom and into the bathroom down the hallway. I locked the door and waited for the police to arrive. In the meantime, I blocked his account on Snapchat and did not want any more snaps from him. When I was inside the bathroom, I didn't hear anything after blocking the guy. He wouldn't be able to contact me, and I didn't hear any noises from the window or anything. I really had no idea what was going on. I just hoped that he wouldn't try to break into the house or anything. Eventually, the cops got there. It was only then that I finally left the bathroom. They told me that they found a man hiding in my backyard. He was a man that I did not recognize at all, and I'm not sure how he knew me or got my Snapchat. I did have my location on through Snap Maps, though, which is how he knew where I lived. Since this incident, I only accept friends on Snapchat if I actually know them and who they are. I had a really scary experience a couple of years ago. Now, during this time, I was back at my parents' house for the summer after my freshman year of college. I have a best friend named Jake. He lived like two blocks away, and we would walk to each other's houses all the time. We'd play video games together and had played on the same basketball team in high school. One night that summer, I was at home and in my bedroom. I had recently got back from my part-time summer job that I had. 
when I went on Snapchat to respond to some snaps and see what was going on with my friends, I saw that Jake had posted a story. Jake would occasionally post Snapchat stories like most friends, but he wasn't known to post anything that crazy or that many Snapchat stories. Jake is known as a pretty calm guy, and what I saw that he posted was really odd and out of character for him. There was like 10 Snapchat videos with a few pictures as well. Each one was really random and hard to tell what it was. Some appeared to be of the ground at nighttime, others the floor of a house, and you could see a few other people's feet. I couldn't tell who anybody was though. I also couldn't make out anybody speaking in the videos. It was just really bizarre and unlike him to be posting this. I slid up on his story responding to it and asked him what was going on. Within minutes, he had seen my response to his story and opened it but did not reply. The stories had all been posted about an hour earlier and I wanted to know what was going on, so I decided to go over to his house. Even though it was like 10 o'clock at night, we were that close of friends. I walked the 10 minutes that it took to get to his house and then knocked on his front door. Jake answered it and asked me what was up. I told him that I saw his stories on Snapchat and was wondering what was going on. He told me that he didn't post anything on Snapchat. Jake went on to say that he lost his phone earlier that morning and tried to find it, but he couldn't. He asked me what was posted to his story. I went inside and we both went over the stories that were posted to his account. I showed them to him and he realized that somebody must have found his phone and took it. Now they were posting to his Snapchat. Based on the Snapchat videos and pictures, there really wasn't much to go on. We were not that good of detectives to see where the people were. We also didn't know why on earth anybody would post these stories at all. Then, we suddenly remembered the snap map. Jake had his location turned on. We both figured out whoever took the phone probably turned it off, but we looked anyways just in case. When we did, we saw that his location was actually still on. It showed exactly on the map where his phone was and it was only about 10 minutes ago that it had been used there. We both compared it to Google Maps and soon had the exact address. It was a house that was maybe a 10 minute drive from where we were. Jake and I both decided to go to the house. We left Jake's house and got into his car. Then we followed the directions to get to the address. None of us had been to that neighborhood before. When we got there, we saw that it did not appear to be the best neighborhood. The houses were small and not very nice looking. They seemed run down and the yards were overgrown and we saw several broken down looking cars. Nevertheless, we parked on the side of the road in front of the house. We both got out and walked up to the front door. Then, we confirmed that this was in fact where his phone had been, and it was. Jake firmly knocked on the front door. After a few seconds, we saw the curtains from the front window open for just a split second. We looked over to see somebody ducking back and closing the curtains quickly. They clearly didn't want to be seen. Jake then shouted from the other side of the door. He said that he lost his phone earlier in the day, and the location was showing it to be here. He said that the only thing he wanted was his phone back, and they could just throw it out the door to him, and we would leave. We got nothing in response. But about a minute later, we heard a noise from behind the house. Somebody was back there, and outside. Now, this was a really bad idea, but we decided to go around back. We left the front step and walked around the side of the house. We hadn't even made it around to the backyard yet when Jake spoke again. He said basically the same thing that he had said before. He really wanted his phone returned to him and was mad that somebody had took it, so I can't really blame him. All of a sudden though, we heard some yelling and the sound of people running. There were man's voices and they were telling us to get the F out of here. I saw for a brief second at least three men running full speed at us. Jake and I just took off. The guys were a ways back but approaching quickly. We ran into the front yard and then into the street. The guys were going so fast behind us that we wouldn't be able to make it to Jake's car and get inside of it on time. Instead, we were forced to run past his car and down the street. We were both decently fast guys, but the people behind us seemed to be almost as fast. We made it to the end of that street and then ran to the next one over. The guys behind us seemed to stop chasing us at that point. There was a little park and we ran in there and hid behind some trees. We stopped and caught our breath and we tried to figure out what to do. We stayed there for maybe five minutes and then carefully headed back to Jake's car. When we got to his car, we didn't see anybody outside or near the house. After that, we just left. We went back to Jake's and he said that he would just have to buy a new phone. At least we tried to get it back. 
Looking back at that night, we probably should not have gone to the house. It could have been really dangerous, but we didn't think about it going into the situation. The location from Jake's phone was turned off after, so I don't know what happened to it. I do know that Jake ended up getting a new phone though.